All right, so right here I have, I just built the open, the, basically the open source version of the product, right? So I'm going to log in. This is the 1.0 version, so it's still OpenStack, OpenStack. The new version would be Crowbar, Crowbar. I can't type it right. Yay. All right. So I can get rid of the next screen here. So our goal here is to be able to change the default network besides 192, 168. 124, 10, or 124. So what do I do? So before you run install, right, as root, let me get to root. Open tab. Okay. CD to opt del chef. Oh, this is the old stuff, right? All this is nicely munged into its own bar clamps now, but okay. Um, crowbar. Edit. Hey, these are all the bar clamp data files that are now split into separate data files, okay, in the new stuff. But they're all munched together in the old. So, VI, BC, template, network. Network. Okay, so we're messing with the network bar clamp. JSON. JSON. Okay, so in one one or whatever we choose to call the next release this explodes into many things but right now the only thing we're talking about is how to change your admin network parameters right. admin network is the thing that causes and controls the booting of secondary systems so if you find the admin network or not. It is. so ignore the vlan we assume it's untagged. The VLAN is more for your note taking than anything else if it's on your switch. We don't use a VLAN and we don't use a bridge. Right. So even and though we have VLAN number here, it's false. So, so we don't use it. Be ignored. So we treat it as a native untagged. Makes sense. So now you can specify the subnet to whatever you want it to be. Okay. So I want best. mine to be uh, one, 110. Okay. So then you have a net mask and you update your broadcast to be 110. Um, and okay. other. Uh, no, zero. So zero. Oh, yeah, that would be smart. Okay, then you can choose a router. You need to have a router, otherwise things won't install properly. Actually, you need to have a router specified, but you don't need to have the real router there. The installers expect a router. All right, so now what you have is these ranges, and these ranges are used by the system when it needs to assign an address based upon a type of system we're bringing up. So in this case, the admin node, we pull from, from this here, pool. Right, R1, and so you want to change R1. that to something inside the range. That makes sense. Should have made it 111 next time. So DHCP is the range of space that we use to bring up nodes as it goes through the discovery and control process. Okay. This needs to be about as many, many nodes as you have, and usually times two because your BMC sometimes network boot too. So as many as you want to bring up at any given one time, you need to have that in here. Makes sense. And then hosts are what the actual addresses that you give to the nodes once they're up and running. These are static and will not change after the discovery phase. Okay, so this is the pool that actually ends up on the That's system. That's right. Okay. So the first pool is our, is our admin node. Next pool down is the DHCP, which is our transitional mode. And then this final one is where the, the switches end up. The okay. nodes end up. Right, that makes perfect sense to me. And then we have this one here is just a placeholder set for us to track because sometimes it's useful to have switches to have their own addresses and stuff, but we don't actually assign them right now. This is kind of a future placeholder thing and a good practice in general. Cool. So you should update the 124 in there as well. Oh, okay, just so it's there. Mm -hmm. Just to be consistent. That so you makes don't a lot of sense. The other thing we want to mention real quick okay. is the BMC network. So if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see two BMC networks. Here's the BMC up. VLAN. And There's BMC. BMC is a special, uh, special right. network. And by default, the admin node will attempt to give BMC addresses to your nodes. And so what we do here is you can make a decision. If your BMC network is the same as your admin node, you can give it the same set of parameters and it's just fine. If right. it's a different network that's isolated from that, then you fill those in here too. In a separate network. That in makes a separate sense. network. And you can fill in some VLAN stuff. Okay. And, then, and so you just make sure. If you notice, these are pulled out of the one below and they're special. Bad. Okay. The BMC VLAN is a special case VLAN. And the admin node doesn't create it by default. 
but this is where you would put a way for your admin node to get access into the BMC network if your admin network didn't necessarily have access to your BMC network. So say you chose to have a VLAN for your BMC separate from your nodes. Which would be which, good security practice. Which is a good right? security practice. This would give you the ability to give a tagged interface so you could put on the interface like VLAN 100 and notice we have the use VLAN specified there. So it would create a VLAN interface of V100, give the machine that address and then the, BM, the admin node could access the BMC. But you'd have to do the allocate of IP address command on, on your own cool. by hand. But that's way beyond what you need so to do. So that's now. this, and then I can just go back and do my TFTP boot, Ubuntu extras install mm -hmm. as root, and I'm good to go. That's right. Excellent. And if you have an error in the file, the install will stop and warn you about the, the uh, configure. Excellent, Greg. Thank you.